we were reflecting in the bar that last year was in many ways a kind of uh, particularly good year at the AA. Um, and um, uh, Ben has been in practice since 1988, having studied here 1983 to 87, something like that. Um, and is in partnership with Caroline Boss, who's an uh, art historian. And together they've published uh, Delinquent Visionaries in 83 and Mobile Forces published last year. Um, so their work spans both um, absolutely the, the practical world of the construction of architecture and urban proposals, uh, but also theoretical speculation. Um, I think yeah, in that sense it is uh, an exemplary practice. And uh, on that note, I'd just like to welcome Ben and uh, look forward to the lecture. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you could have the first slide and the lights off. And the title um, of the talk uh, is going to be Mobile Forces, uh, like, um, like uh, the book uh, published a year ago. Um, I actually don't like to give so very much uh, uh, formal lectures, uh, so, so and, and non-linear lectures uh, are for me the most uh, common, so there will be almost four lectures in this uh, 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 lecture. Uh, I will um, talk about the notion of the diagrams we have been working with. Uh, dissipated systems um, and the redefinition of uh, uh, organizational structures. Um, the only formal bit will be a short text I, I will introduce to you. Um, the principle of working with these uh, uh, forces in our architecture, as I mentioned, should not be seen as a definition of an order or as a typology of a coherent system of organization. Uh, we have learned that structures are actually amount to a process field of materialization based on spatial and uh, material uh, devices. Rather than representing any kind of homo homogeneous uh, linear system, uh, within a structural static moment, we believe there is uh, uh, evolution. The emergence of the system derives from a crossing of an, uh, what we call a qualitative threshold that is paradoxically a moment of uh, structural instability. I'm more interested in these, what I call dissipative uh, structures, um, which what uh, you can call open system, uh, uh, open systems in a way that one urban static structure can be said to be one, uh, let's say, open structure full of energy incorporating economic, public, and political uh, information. Um, the first project I would like to show to you is a uh, project uh, for a villa in the, in the center of Holland. Um, and the first uh, slide you see is a uh, slide of a uh, um, bunker uh, type, uh, I think uh, 29, it's a German bunker. Um, and we have been really for a long time uh, interested in using these uh, uh, structures, these um, statements. I don't know if you know the, the book uh, from Foucault, um, of, sorry, from Deleuze on Foucault, where he talks about the notion of the diagram where, let's say, the diagram is in a certain kind of statement. So you can use the diagram not in a linguistic way, but you can use it as a statement. You, um, the diagram could uh, project vir um, virtual uh, ways of organization. Um, in a certain way, um, in the book, it is also described that, um, let's say, in the diagram, you could read, like, let's say, in the panopticon, uh, a particular kind of power structure, like an instrument of, uh, let's say, a representation of social, political, uh, and economical uh, uh, aspects. Um, but in this diagram, the most important was the, 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 the relation between the orthogonal internal structure and the liquid kind of uh, uh, element around it. Um, uh, 
in the in the house, uh, we try to use these uh, different aspects of um, um, working with the diagram. So here you see on the one side, you see the um, the the lower part of the house. You see it here in the elevation. So the house is moved up towards uh, the the end of uh, the landscape. So there is a pushing and pulling uh, between the the landscape and the infrastructure that is on the side of the house. Um, there is a major kind of entrance towards the uh, middle part show. On the right side there is the living area, on the left side there is a uh, uh, sleeping area. But actually this pushing a pulley between the landscape um, and also the, the relation between let's say the, the, the top part of the house and the bottom part of the house were intertwined with this kind of aspects of uh, a strong internal uh, organization and a very fluid uh, um, uh, external uh, 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 liquid, you can almost say, um, uh, landscape. The, the, the walls are related to the, the gravel uh, of, the, uh, of the garden. Actually, it was a very uh, eccentric uh, client who uh, didn't want to have any... Uh, uh, gardening, gardening around the house. So uh, I mean, uh, the no, no uh, cutting and uh, having trees in the in the in the garden was for him uh, uh, very important. Um, and and we believe that it was in that relation also in the uh, relation with the surroundings very important to to study how let's say the 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 fluidness of the surroundings could be in the same time highly be highly be uh, protected so that um, let's say some windows were very low and very kind of carefully uh, situated so that you could only see the landscape and not not your neighbors and sometimes there where it was uh, possible we opened the house to the central part of the uh, the internal organization of the house here it is possible when you have here the uh, part show um, and the living area whereby it is possible to, to open up uh, the patio and the living room becomes patio, patio becomes living room. Um, and here you see um, the connection between, let's say, the patio from the side where you see a part of the kitchen. And actually uh, what is interesting is that uh, although the house is from the outside incredibly kind of uh, introvert, uh, the light could come in really deeply in the, into the house. And here you see that uh, the kind of almost uh, uh, hooking situation between the landscape, the gravel, and the, the, the stone of the, the facade. Actually, what is uh, interesting, working with these different uh, um, uses of, of uh, techniques, um, working with diagrams, and working with, let's say, the transformation of the diagram, um, uh, we discovered that um, these techniques generate also new uh, building techniques. For instance, we believe that it was possible also to glue the facade. What is, I don't know if that is uh, normal in uh, England, but uh, gluing a facade is uh, quite useful because then you don't need a concrete uh, structure behind the, uh, the external uh, forces of the facade and you could layer the, uh, the building uh, layer by layer and have only kind of a simple cladded system behind the, um, uh, the structure. But also what is really interesting is that, uh, that, let's say, the stones are put on top of each other and become almost one kind of uh, uh, finished uh, uh, wall. Um, and as maybe, uh, as I said, uh, talking about, let's say, the, the panopticum, the, the relation between the power structure and the surroundings, um, the Leuze referred to um, the, the prison in, in the interpretation of Foucault that the prison is a kind of uh, uh, environmental uh, statement, uh, whereas the prisoner is the content. And uh, you can say the same of this uh, house, you know, that you are almost a prisoner in this closed off house. And the illusion of, uh, of, of a certain hate of the neighbors is uh, for that reason uh, growing. So, I mean, the uh, uh, according to this, uh, what they call al already themselves uh, the bunker, uh, they put these uh, different plants and, and, and walls against uh, the house. But you can maybe see also in the relation with the architecture and the surroundings why we uh, designed this house in this way. 
I mean, this is um, maybe one of my fa favorite uh, diagrams. Um, I um, collect, maybe now already for around five years, different uh, uh, divers, and maybe we have uh, now collected maybe around 2,000 of these uh, diagrams. We have really a lot of these. Uh, the reason why I think this is one of yeah, the most intriguing diagrams is because it is representing uh, the change of our physical condition where we live in. It is uh, showing a typology of uh, different organizations who are uh, organizing our communication system today. Maybe you can say that um, the density in the way how we uh, live today is far more denser than any kind of physical uh, metropole we can imagine. We can move from millions from one place to the other in seconds. So I really believe that uh, this diagram uh, promises a, a possible insight for uh, rethinking organizational spaces in the future. Um, and in the relation to that idea, uh, we have been testing several ways of how one could uh, deal with these uh, specific uh, uh, new uh, uh, material technologies, I would like to say almost. Um, in this uh, uh, diagram, uh, we studied uh, uh, the possibilities of connecting uh, uh, urban information with programmatic information, uh, geometrical information in one image. It is for building uh, close to a highway in the, again, center of Holland. Um, this mixture of information is mutating uh, the possibility of for this uh, structure of the building. So um, what is interesting is that you not see here, like in a collage, any scene. Everything is kind of one, in one image. So and you can mutate from one moment to the other um, let's say the site information or the program that is uh, projected on the site and actually uh, the way how we try to counter move uh, the, the information of let's say the surroundings in relation with the way how you could see the building was very important in this uh, uh, study. You can see it here a little bit uh, in the way how then the torsion of the, uh, the, the skin of the facade you can see here the, the, the <coughs> movement of the skin in relation with the ground plan um, turning itself in an, uh, in an almost uh, steel mollusk. Uh, here you see the site where uh, maybe you can understand now that the building is uh, lower than the highway, so actually the top of the building is far more visible than, than the, um, the lower part of the building. And here we, in this, uh, what, what looks like the final model, but it is a sketch model, uh, we studied the steel mollusk in the relation with the way how the mollusk could uh, almost uh, capture the construction of the internal organization. Um, this part of the building is uh, facing uh, 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 the highway and what well you can see, I mean there is on this side here the main entrance, some parts of the offices are uh, pushed through the facade uh, and with some openings and other cuts uh, within the steel mollusk. Here you see distortional, uh, uh, almost hyperbarabolic uh, uh, movement in the construction uh, related to the, the counter movement uh, towards this uh, visible element uh, in the relation with the, the highway view. And I mean in the relation maybe also uh, with the house, this kind of uh, combination, this polarity between the, 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 the turned uh, skin or the, the twisted skin in the relation with uh, the internal organization is quite uh, robust. Uh, the the organi organization is uh, equal potential, uh, very simple in its uh, uh, division, uh, routing. Uh, there is the main organization here from the entrance towards the balcony zone and the other kind of uh, offices, uh, smaller kind of um, uh, gallery spaces are behind the, the, the main offices. It, it is actually combined office building with one major uh, head office in the middle, it's for a uh, commercial uh, company. Um, I would uh, like to, in the first part of the lecture, uh, show you shortly some, some uh, projects we have been uh, designing over the last few years um, and then focus on the bridge project uh, later. Uh, but I will not 
go very deeply into the projects in order to not uh, yeah, um, get into the, the subject too, too deeply because um, I, I would like to explain the, the techniques, the, the methods of working. For instance, in the way how we worked in the fir earlier project, uh, we studied um, in a uh, later uh, 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 analysis, this is a center for uh, handicapped children in a project uh, in Amsterdam, how these kind of uh, turns could be related to um, uh, different uh, divisions of organizational uh, 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 programmatic divisions in the, in, the, in the middle of the building. Um, this project is actually going to be built and um, it's really crazy. I mean, the, the, the urban planners of Amsterdam asked us to do a building uh, with one floor but could uh, give the effect of a building of four floors high. Um, and we said, I mean, that it was possible, but um, then of course, I mean, we needed uh, to study uh, different uh, uh, ways of uh, uh, bringing uh, these kind of uh, turns and twists, twisted uh, elements in the ground floor so that you then could have uh, many suggestions in the first layer. Um, I mean, this is uh, maybe an interesting representation of some of the Dutch uh, skies. Um, and actually where, <coughs> I mean, of course, I mean, with some point in the middle, we thought that it was necessary to emphasize the, the, the cut through this uh, project um, and see how it uh, was possible to, to emphasize this uh, uh, urban uh, impactness. <coughs> that, um, um, the, the turn and the, the hyperbarabolic uh, movement um, generated, uh, the, the in this case, the changes of the roofs, uh, the openings, as I explained, uh, and also the housing parts who are uh, part of this uh, center. In the middle part, you have uh, uh, the major uh, um, uh, combined uh, functions like uh, living uh, rooms, uh, washing areas, etc. And the multifunctional areas are <coughs> in the higher part of the building. Um, working with um, the computer, working with the wave technique of the computer, I would like to say almost. Working with uh, the possibility of testing and model, what we have studied uh, digitally, um, is something what, uh, what comes up the last few years quite a lot. Not only in the manual way of uh, working with, with models, but also in the, like I explained, also in the making of the buildings itself. We believe that it is uh, very important to, to use that wave technique. Um, so it is not only the computer who uh, I think uh, can save uh, uh, the new uh, future of architecture, but on the other hand, I think that the computer gives you some uh, kind of new insight whereby you um, could test uh, uh, possibilities of uh, uh, certain kind of spatial implications what, uh, what we could never uh, uh, test it before. This is a project for Yokohama, whereby I will also be quite brief about this project, uh, whereby we work with uh, the internal uh, division of infrastructural uh, uh, divisions in relation with external uh, uh, divisions. Uh, the parks were uh, related to uh, the voids in the buildings, um, or specifically the, the, the different parts of the building. Um, and the major organization was a cross structure um, in the center of the building um, with a distribution of uh, different uh, uh, gardens inside it. Um, the voids were uh, related to, uh, as I explained, uh, the gardens in the surrounding, but were then organized in different uh, organizations, one after the other. Um, for the rest, uh, we worked uh, very intensely with uh, the idea of how intensive functions and superficial uh, functions could be combined. <coughs> um, and I mean after having been studying these different layers of infrastructure, uh, we uh, tested the way how these different layers could then be uh, uh, organized to the different floors inside this cross structure. 
um, the projection of the different uh, gardens inside uh, the tube structure we uh, introduced. In the beginning we uh, thought uh, where the, the spaces were narrow and uh, specifically uh, smaller. We thought to introduce a microscope garden, then a telescope garden. Uh, at the end of the building where you have an uh, incredible view of uh, Yokohama, we, we introduced the kaleidoscope garden. Here you see uh, the combination uh, of the, the cross structure and the, and the different uh, uh, gardens. Uh, and what we discovered when we were um, uh, refining the project was that um, the, the combinations of different uh, functions and let's say technical aspects of the building, like the mechanical floors, uh, let's say the way how let's say the floors be uh, uh, let's say intertwined with the gardens was so that you uh, then uh, were getting a space so uh, uh, mutated and so complex that it was almost indescribable to, to study and to test in the section um, although we needed to do the section in order to define these uh, 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 strict uh, technical uh, informations um, And maybe almost like in uh, the painting of uh, paintings of Bacon, <coughs> like where there is the existence of, of uh, or the non-existence of the proper scale to, to many structures in the face is the same what you can say about this uh, discovery of the space uh, the spaces in Yokohama, the Yokohama building, um, where we believe that the, the combinations of all these structures we're not uh, introducing a kind of uh, space of bigness or fastness, but we're introducing a space with yeah, uh, non-existence of scale. And I mean this distribution of uh, uh, the skin of the building, the cross, uh, the different functions and the gardens were, of course, I mean, were important in the, the distribution of, of organizing the internal structure of the building, but at the same time we believe that in this, this vision, the program should be always be possible to, to grow and shrink uh, over time. So actually that is movement, while you're moving in the building of changing programs would be al always possible. Um, and here you see some of these uh, uh, spaces. I mean, the, this is the microscope garden where you have a soft, uh, intimate uh, kind of uh, uh, wall-like, uh, ceiling-like uh, 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 garden. Um, when we uh, designed these sections, we could give the computer the commando to uh, search for the next section. And I mean, it gave us the most in incredible, uh, unexpected uh, kind of views like these. We, we never designed these. Um, here you see the, the uh, fragment of the telescope garden. And here at the end, uh, a view of uh, uh, the end of the building where you have also the, the major par uh, the part, uh, part of the, the terminal with a view to uh, Yokohama um, and here the main road uh, going to this uh, uh, terminal, part of the end of the terminal. And then afterwards uh, skin the whole building. Um, working uh, with, with the methods and, and designing with them, in the in like I said, in the wave technique or, let's say, in the technique of uh, rediscovering uh, different unexpected spaces, we uh, used uh, uh, this uh, method of working in an, um, a project we recently did for uh, the Milan uh, Trinale, um, uh, whereby, let's say, we had to work with a 9x9 uh, sp uh, space uh, where um, uh, the curator, uh, Ole Baumann uh, was uh, working uh, with us on the possibility of showing in this uh, uh, pavilion different ways of working with all, uh, uh, all the levels uh, of the computer. And actually, I mean, th these are at the moment my own sketches whereby, I don't know if you know the, the program Silicon Graphics alias, alias hi and how you can combine it with the 3D Studio. It is amazing how say how you can set back certain parts of the sketch and just 
put them on hold and bring them back to the center of the sketch or you know I mean an amazing problem and this was an, uh, an earlier study where we uh, studied how you could enter the the pavilion and then walk through let's say projections uh, Sorry. Um, and then, ah, these are, sorry, these are opposite down. But the way how we work with the, the structure of the, the pavilion and the way how, let's say, the projections were used on the pavilion were maybe uh, related to this diagram where, let's say, internal organizations and forces uh, could uh, produce with external forces of projections a an, an movement of. Uh, 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 the structure whereby, let's say, the, the, the structure is all the time kind of changing. So, I mean, what happened was that some people really touched uh, the projections and, and really uh, tried to follow the projections, whereby we sometimes used in the center with different stills. So sometimes we had different uh, uh, informations on different parts of the wall, but sometimes there were also one picture, so they made the space one and fragmented in the same time. And in the end, also produced uh, uh, and manufactured by uh, the computer. So all the fragments and the the, 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 the ribbons are cut by um, um, a laser. Um, and at the moment, we uh, think that that we can uh, use these uh, different uh, studies in in the most uh, uh, practical sense. Um, um, to explain this is uh, in a project where we are working on right now is an, uh, an extension of a music hall uh, in Dusseldorf whereby we studied the existing facade of an, uh, an, uh, a building we had to uh, extend uh, whereby um, the, the division of the facade uh, was uh, related to the, the, the division of the program for this new building whereby we used everything and wrapped everything at once in this uh, gesture of the building so um, we believe that um, that like in a single service organization that it is now possible to to organize uh, the single service organization so that you can actually wrap it and turn it and bend it in such a way that everything can become one so uh, technique uh, construction the installation the division of program could be all applied to this one single service of uh, organization and actually that's that's how it is organized nice in this case so you have here the different floors uh, a ceiling who is hooked and coming out of the this floor is holding up this part of the uh, the wall um, this part where you have a central staircase and uh, elevator is holding up uh, the central part of the, the building so everything is becoming one and without <coughs> any specific uh, uh, codes of uh, columns. And then will be uh, wrapped uh, in uh, glass uh, afterwards. Um, talking about the, the computer, talking about the techniques, um, this is an earlier project I would like to show you what, what we designed in maybe 92. Um, here we actually had a totally different way of working. Um, in that time, we, we uh, instead of uh, working with the diagram, we uh, believed very much in the notion of the ideogram, uh, whereby, let's say, the, the ideogram could represent, uh, I don't know if you know, like an ideogram, like in a Chinese sign, could represent uh, double meanings, like uh, like in a Chinese sign, um, you can write bamboo, but in the same time it can uh, uh, be called uh, uh, chair. Um, and in this uh, detail, we studied uh, how, let's say, uh, the detail could be related to the, the organization of the site. Uh, for instance, on this side uh, we used the basalt lava, and the other side uh, aluminium, um, uh, and this. Uh, polarization of the two materials was also, in our uh, uh, opinion, uh, related to the notion of uh, uh, electricity, uh, like in the program of this uh, building. 
Um, at the same time, uh, like basalt lava, um, um, and um, let's say aluminium, aluminium is uh, uh, produced by an incredible amount of uh, energy, and uh, basalt lava is maybe you can say a kind of a frozen uh, uh, energy. Um, and these kind of layers of information, what was all in the diagram, was for us to start and, and, uh, and uh, the first move uh, towards the, the project. The same kind of uh, polarity was used in the way how we constructed the building, so uh, in this case uh, simply with, with steel and concrete, concrete for the internal organization of the machines inside the building and for the cladding and the, uh, uh, some parts of the external part of the building, uh, steel. Um, uh, uh, an open space was used uh, in the central part of the building where we had the major uh, uh, transformers uh, in a huge vertical uh, uh, linear uh, space. Um, so this openness and closeness of the building was uh, an, another polarity. Um, and actually what, what happened was that on the closer side of the uh, building where you have uh, a park um, what is actually also a cemetery, these incredible images uh, were produced. So the doubleness of this facade uh, generated uh, totally different uh, images than, uh, than on the other uh, basalt lava site. Um, and actually talking about scale, like in the Yokohama project, we um, discovered that starting with the detail, that it could be, um, and I think you all know the, the essay, uh, uh, by again uh, Deleuze where he uh, talks about uh, smooth space and actually what he borrows from uh, Boulet, uh, the musician, um, where one could start with a fragment, when one could start with a detail, one could start with uh, the, the detail of music in a serial organization, and whereas in the smooth space you don't experience the scale again, it is all kind of uh, soft and, and, and uh, non-linear, where like in the desert or in the painting of uh, Cezanne, uh, you, you discover everything in the in the detail. Actually, that is how also, as Deslouise describes it, Cezanne started with the paintings. He started with the fragment. He started with the detail, and he lost himself in the in the whole. And actually, I mean, if you see the building here, you can think. I mean, the the, the doors are three by three, or uh, you know, two by two, but they are really huge. They are seven by seven. And the building is almost uh, 20 meters high. It's really a fast, uh, uh, big uh, uh, structure. But because of the, 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 the machine-like uh, uh, orientation and maybe with a different uh, organization of working, we um, uh, discovered this in the, in the whole uh, organization of the building. So here you see, uh, in the end, uh, the, the basalt lava side of the building, where the light like the opposite side of the building is not kind of reflected, but uh, extremely observed. And um, here the, 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 the explanation, as I uh, told you, of uh, let's say the, the openness of uh, the basalt lava area of the building, and on the other hand, uh, uh, the more closed off uh, uh, park like uh, structure on, on this side of the building. Um, the turns and, and the twist and the bendings are all related to the openings of the, of the uh, building where uh, these are uh, used for transportations uh, of uh, all the uh, transformor transformers inside the building. Sometimes these turns uh, have to be uh, calculated uh, again on the, on the computer because to make them so smooth as possible, we had to cut the edges of the, the stone in different uh, angles. And uh, as you see here, sometimes the cladding was uh, uh, not uh, used on the on steel alone, but again on the concrete parts uh, as well. Sorry for this angry looking man because I asked him uh, to take away the facade for this uh, photograph. Um, this is a view of uh, the, the building inside. What a lot of friends of mine think it is a very 
almost a morbid uh, picture. And I, I think it is actually talking about the morbid uh, picture. What is interesting, working with these uh, aspects of the detail, working with the notion of the ideogram, we discovered that a lot of uh, uh, friends or uh, people who saw the building was that they gave uh, to the building totally different names, uh, like for instance it has been called uh, um, a mausoleum or uh, a theater. Um, and I think, I think it is good that uh, these different interpretations are given to the building. Um, I mean, if you compare it to a lot of other electricity stations, I think uh, they're not really kind of uh, taken care of, in the sense that I believe that an electricity station is one of our major kind of infrastructural buildings where we uh, live with today, especially when you think about our uh, holy uh, 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 televisions we, uh, we live with and computers, etc. Okay, maybe we could turn to the next uh, tray. My last project, um, but what I will show you more in depth, and <coughs> I will keep the lecture also a bit short, um, is the project for a bridge in uh, Rotterdam. I don't know if you know Rotterdam, but it is an incredible uh, uh, city. Um, and maybe the, the idea of mobile forces is specifically related to um, this project. Um, not in the way how it is uh, designed in its uh, technique, but specifically also in the way how uh, different uh, forces uh, uh, were part of the, the process of uh, working on this bridge. For instance, we had to work with uh, uh, almost 200 engineers uh, uh, of the city of Rotterdam. Uh, we had eight departments, uh, um, engineering department, but also uh, road department, harbor department, etc. we had to work with. Um, the politicians uh, uh, made the decision for this bridge. I'll explain you how the competition uh, went later, um, whereby they were getting the prize. So the politicians, the, 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 the public, uh, the, you know, 20,000 people will use the bridge uh, over the next year. Um, and uh, maybe uh, another thing is the, the, the city, as I explained, is an amazing uh, city. If you compare it to uh, a city like uh, Amsterdam, uh, Rotterdam is uh, far more an uh, unsentimental uh, city uh, um, with a uh, robust uh, history after the war. But I mean, it was incredibly bond. After the war, they de developed an amazing amount of new uh, urban uh, plans and, and buildings. Um, and the robustness of the harbor, uh, it's, it's really kind of uh, wild. If you compare it to Amsterdam, it is a more cozy uh, 70th century uh, city, or uh, Den Haag, what is, what is more an administrative city, uh, Rotterdam is uh, really robust. And I mean, maybe the, the robustness is also part of uh, these towers you find in uh, Rotterdam. Uh, the site is uh, uh, very close to uh, the center, so you have the center of Rotterdam here, um, uh, and the bridge is crossing uh, the river from this part in a turn to uh, a new developed uh, to develop uh, area on this side here, what is called the Kopfenzaar. Um, and the site is not only the bridge where we are working on, but also uh, the landings of the bridge. So here you have the landing of the bridge on the, the north side uh, of Rotterdam. And here uh, you have the landing of the, the bridge on the south, where you have this new developing to develop a area. Um, so, and we work also on these areas. Um, to, to be clear, I mean the bridge is on the one hand here uh, coming from the edge of the the case, and then moving uh, over the other end of the the, the north side of the the land uh, and over the K, uh, so that it is kind of under an uh, angle. And maybe this was the, the, the major key to the, or the image of the major key to of the, the, the design of the project, whereby, uh, and maybe you could call it a uh, diagram as well, although the laser would call it a diagram, uh, uh, Foucault not. For Foucault, it would be 
the diagram something that is metric, whereas uh, 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 Deleuze, uh, like in Bacon's uh, painting, as I showed you, uh, he believes that, uh, that, that an image could be uh, a uh, diagram as well. But this diagram was very important because it refers to the way how we had to work with the height of the, the bridge. There was an, in the competition an incredible discussion about how uh, high the one pylon bridge needed to be, and that was uh, uh, 142 meters whereas otherwise it would be a two pylon bridge. Um, and we came up with the idea that the bridge could be lower uh, in the relation with the length and the height. I mean, there was a ratio the engineers gave us, gave us <coughs> of uh, one to uh, one and a half, but we turned it into one to, <coughs> one to two. Um, by introducing this bending force in the pylon, um, what maybe you could call also a uh, collapse force or a catastrophe force. It is an, 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 an force that is instable but produces uh, 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 positive uh, 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 forces. And you see the different diagrams we study. So, I mean, if you would do a higher pylon uh, and bring the cables to the top, then let's say um, the, the, the pylon uh, would be too high. So we said, Let's distribute uh, the cables on the front, uh, but then we discovered that all the forces would, would go to the uh, to the, the fourth side of the, the the bridge, and by bringing the backstay cable to the highest point and bending the the pylon in the in the, in the other way, uh, all the forces were distributed in the in the right order, and this was my secret uh, picture I showed to the engineers uh, together with my uh, advisors, uh, whereby we said that. The bridge, if you mirror it, could be seen almost like an, an bow. So all the forces uh, were related to this uh, bow, and uh, and, and the, let's say the the length would be uh, here as long as the engineers uh, wanted. So I mean, this was uh, uh, the the first part of the the design process of the the project, with all the different uh, complexities uh, around it almost an Alejandro uh, Fashid uh, story whereby we for almost two years had to fight for our contracts with uh, four lawyers um, and when we had uh, the contracts um, we were always we were already halfway through the process um, so no money uh, no detail no money um, uh, and I mean after um, let's say uh, this part of the project, this study of the project, we um, thought that, let's say, in the relation with all the forces in the pylon, it was necessary to study how we could make this long and thin uh, slender uh, deck. So again, there was an, uh, an incredible, interesting, uh, long discussion between how high this uh, deck could be. Uh, the engineer said 230 and uh, uh, two, two meters uh, 10. And uh, after my, uh, maybe to show something of my own flexibility, we changed it in uh, 220. <coughs> um, after an incredible amount of wind tunnel uh, uh, studies. Uh, the deck is really intense in the sense of, of how it is used. It is uh, a double car lane with a tram track in the middle, a bicycle uh, route. Uh, on the side with a uh, footpath uh, at the edge. Uh, and here again, the, the, the way how we worked with the different departments, with our office, I mean, we turned our office, a part of the office, into the engineering uh, office, whereby we, in that time, what was 1991, uh, 1992, we worked with a program that was not a 3D studio yet, but a program whereby we could quickly uh, bring all the forces of the pylon into the geometry of the, the structure, whereby we work with different uh, coordination points. And all this information was later uh, given to the engineers and tested it how then, uh, let's say, the different thicknesses of steel uh, need to be applied to the, uh, the pylon. And also, I mean, after the, the information went to the engineers, the information was also uh, used uh, uh, in the way how the, the steel was uh, cut uh, later by the laser. Um, 
And of course, I mean, later in the way how, let's say, the top of the pile and with its internal organization, the, the different uh, um, divisions of steel, um, we, we again used the, the, the computer, like uh, you see here in this image. I mean, you can see also uh, the complexity of uh, some of these uh, parts of the, uh, the piling, where the backstay cable um, points here at the end of the, the top of the piling, in this part. And again, I mean, the testing of the model and the computer were very important in this process. Uh, and here you see some uh, looking through models whereby uh, the engineers uh, in the end totally believed that it was uh, possible to, to uh, bring this, um, uh, this cable there to that point, this highest point of the, the, the pylon, because uh, the thickness of this um, pylon is here only uh, 2 uh, meters and 50. And you see the final. Here, further development of the, uh, the, the this part of the bridge um, in its uh, painting uh, process. The top, uh, what it was uh, built later, where I mean we we had to work with the top uh, so that you could change and move <coughs> the top from from the the, uh, the part of the pine so that you could always uh, uh, clean the uh, that's in Holland uh, very important. Uh, other parts of the sections of the bridge were um, later also um, uh, made at that same um, site. Actually, one of the, the incredible, uh, interesting aspects of uh, the, 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 the making process of this uh, project was the, the, the contractor, because he is an offshore builder, uh, and um, I had the most amazing stories in the beginning and we never believed it. Like for instance, uh, that he had a, a crane that was uh, uh, almost two meters higher than the pylon itself, of, and the pylon is 139 meters high, what I forgot to tell you. So uh, he, he uh, ordered this uh, crane from the Chinese Sea in order to, to lift up this uh, part of the bridge and put it on his feet in one day. And, s and, and uh, <laughs> you can imagine that in Rotterdam, uh, the people like the crane better than my bridge. You know? <laughs> and then uh, what was maybe another boom effect was uh, uh, the, the shipping of the whole uh, part piling and part of the bridge to the location uh, whereby normally you like in the <coughs> early earlier house uh, you bring you know, each day a stone one uh, you know d stone by stone on top of each other in in, uh, in, uh, in, in maybe uh, two or three days whereby you have then let's say 30 centimeters uh, uh, moved into the building where here uh, in one again day the whole building was or the whole uh, object was put onto the site uh, incredibly quickly. This is a uh, picture from the last uh, few uh, months whereby you see how the last parts of the deck are uh, brought together in the, in the center of the, uh, the structure. Um, and the aspect of um, all the forces who came together on the pilots were for us uh, the reason to, to focus also quite a long time on the, on the concrete elements where the, the bridge is uh, standing on. Uh, almost like in uh, Brancusi's uh, 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 sculptures, we said that maybe uh, yeah, it must be possible to make the pedestals uh, more interesting than the bridge itself. And it's, you see in uh, uh, yeah, the this is the pilot very close to the square on the north side of the bridge. So when you stand here along the quay, you can look through the, the pilot. And you see a detail of that uh, pilot and, and the amazing scale is again around uh, 40 meters wide. Uh, this is another pilot where the, the major feet of the piling uh, is standing on. Uh, this was 
really a very dangerous process whereby we had to uh, uh, work with uh, scuba divers to uh, to go into the piler and had to uh, take away the sand or suck the sand away so that the whole piler could uh, be uh, lowered into the, the ground. This is a uh, part of the bridge where you have uh, a uh, bascular calder, uh, calder or, or uh, machine uh, room. Uh, a part of the bridge where the engineers are maybe a little bit more happy with. A bridge that can be opened uh, where all the ocean liners can cross the bridge. Uh, but it does have a length of uh, almost uh, 55 meters uh, uh, high. Um, so that we have also the possibility to bring different public uh, squares uh, to uh, that part of the pile. And here uh, the protection areas for the, the backstay cables. Well, this is uh, the landing of the bridge where we are working on right now. We have to, uh, yeah, an, an, a different buildings of, uh, let's say, a restaurant, a cafe, uh, parking area, etc. That part is being built right now. Another staircase, what is going to be uh, related to that uh, landing of the bridge. Um, yeah, and um, because uh, for many reasons, I would like to uh, uh, explain you that that this uh, project, um, um, what does have so many kind of uh, 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 complications in the way how it has, has it has been made. Uh, in the same time, is an incredible, uh, uh, interesting project for me. I mean, because it is uh, related to. Uh, the way how you could uh, look uh, in a different way to uh, architecture and uh, engineering, uh, landscaping and working with uh, the city. Uh, and the bridge sometimes, uh, if you see it now in its landscape, is sometimes very uh, light and uh, open. Uh, sometimes uh, incredible uh, robust uh, uh, and heavy or almost like a uh, cathedral-like uh, uh, object uh, with a kind of central space uh, in the middle. I mean, you will see it uh, later when the bridge is finished, uh, that the central space is uh, very important uh, for the bridge. Um, industrial and almost uh, in the same time it could be uh, seen as a uh, needle uh, uh, in the landscape. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to uh, finish with this uh, project. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone have any questions? Uh,